Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the USPA Polo Network. We are here for the 2024 NPC 16 Gold Championship Final here on the BTG uh, Practical Field, a uh, field number two uh, National Polo Center here in Wellington, Florida. We've got the Joe Barry Memorial Championship, Forbes Plunkett taking on the Ova Soccer Cup champions, Clearwater. I'm Toby Wayman. Joining with me as always, Cody Offen. Here we go, Cody. Thank you, Toby. Huge matchup here. Forbes Plunkett, they won their semifinal game 10-9 over Lafay Dazos. Nico Escobar scored a buzzer beater right at the end of regulation time to win that game. Nico was the top performer for Forbes Plunkett, scoring four goals and an assist on 50% field goal shooting. Now this team shot just under 40% from the field in their semifinal game. That was the best of all semifinalists. And 
they outscored Lafay Dazos two to nothing during a four minute penalty for Pipe Versalino after a third yellow card. That was a huge point in that game. Absolutely sensational play, especially from the two Escobar brothers. Unbelievable. During that four minutes, Toby, it was fantastic. It really was. I mean, not only did they hold them yeah, to, to zero, they actually put two points on the board. Anyway, Clearwater defeated BTA 12 11 in overtime in their semifinal game. Green Columbia scored three goals, adding. Um, uh, to the semifinal best of, with four assists and eight throw-ins one. They made 43% of their penalty shots versus BTA. They had nine field goals in the semifinals, most of any team. Uh, key stats here, they took 27 shots in their semifinal game, most of anyone in the 16-goal championship. Uh, let's take a look at how these two teams got here to the finals here today. Got our graphic... Oh, well, sorry. We'll go ahead and I guess we'll go to the teams here first. Clearwater. Joaquin Vilgray going to be playing number one. Gringo Columbus two. Number three, Lucas Diaz Alberti and Camp Campbell in the number four position there for the Clearwater team. And then for Forbes Plunkett, we'll have Brandon Plunkett playing number one. Nico Escobar two. Felipe Versalino number three and Lucas Escobar playing the number four position. And in the saddle, we've got Jamie Maricatani and Hector Galindo. And then third man is going to be Martin Pasquale. Mm, let's uh, check out this Highlight feature we've got here of Lucas Diaz Alberti. Huge game over BTA again in that semifinal. What a game by Diaz Alberti. He scored six goals on 50% shooting. He drew six fouls as well in that oh. close win. Again, 12 11 in overtime against BTA. Perhaps slight favorite BTA as well in that matchup mm -hmm. in Clearwater certainly played lights out and again dangerous opponent here today against Forbes Plunkett team that has had a ton of success at the 16 goal level here this season okay so looks like we're getting ready to have our here you go here's the uh, road to the final bracket we were looking for earlier as we mentioned there Clearwater defeating BTA Forbes Plunkett defeating Lafay Dazos in their two semifinal matchups. Remember to engage with us on Twitter or X using the hashtag USPA Live or get onto Facebook, comment away. Love to know where you're watching from. Any questions for Toby and I? Mm -hmm. Let us know who you're cheering for as well. You can see the Forbes Plunkett fan club there in the background just a moment ago. You'll see that all the orange shirts back there, but Toby, I can give you a little insight to the horses here. Chucker number one. You can see Nico Escobar there on Charisma. Nice gray horse. Brandon Plunkett is on Invita. Pipe Versalino will start on Latia Bancada. Very nice horse for Pipe. That's that's the mare that actually won Best Playing Pony in the final. And Lucas Escobar is on Incari Perlita here in Chucker number one. And on the flip side, we'll see Pelo Gray on Polly Pocket. Gringo Columbres is on Minera. Lucas Diaz Alberti is starting on Senora Halea. And Camp Campbell is on Justine. All right, perfect. Yeah, that Bancada mare is the mare that uh, that won Best Friend Pony in the final of the Outback Cup. Uh, but that was when they were playing under the um, the uh, the Copper Line Farms name, team name. Here we go. Balls and play games underway. It's going to be Lucas Diaz Alberti to pick up the right of way. He's going to be put in the pocket by Versalino now. Drags it back to the left. Gringo comes in to help out. Gringo looking for a place to go here. Gringo holds that ball, gets away from the man. Oh, not quite. Well done. Well done, Gringo. He got it done. Hits the tail shot back to Lucas Alberti, who's already breaking to the goal. Lucas right there in the zone coming in. Luke, it'll be Lucas Escobar now. There's going to be a lot of Lucases here on the field today. Nico comes in. He's going to get caught falling over the right away after the shot. Penalty number two coming up going in favor of Clearwater. On the attack quickly here, Clearwater able to draw the foul, put themselves on the penalty line. Stephanie Crumble says, great sharing section on the sidelines. Yep, they always are. Whenever Georgette Escobar is field side there to cheer on her boys, she makes it a lot of fun. My number one favorite fan in polo is Georgette Escobar. Camp Campbell getting this ball teed up. Camp, if I'm not mistaken, took most of their open goal penalties. And he's also really good at shooting fours, actually. He's a 
he can, you know, he can really crush the ball. He's a strong guy, but his timing has gotten so much better over the past few years. I mean, he can really just lay the crush on the ball, uh, and he's very good on the penalty fours if Gringo isn't feeling it or Lucas isn't feeling it. He's a great another option there. All right, he's going to pick up the first point of the day and now make the score 1-0 here in the first chucker play. Camp uh, Campbell's beautiful wife is also pregnant. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe I heard she's going to have a, a, a boy, another baby boy. So congratulations to the Campbell family there, picking up another grandchild. Here comes Versalino. He winds up and sends it forward here, looking for Nico, who's got a step on his man. Escobar coming in hot, looking good. Escobar with the flip shot forward, looking good in the red zone. Oh, no, it got away from him. And it goes over the back line wide. You won't see Nico make those kind of mistakes very often. He's usually deadly accurate going to goal. Yeah, good chance here for Nico and Forbes Plunkett just wide. So we'll see the first knock-in of the game here for Clearwater. Gringo. It's sold to Pada. Oh, yeah, they're going to catch Ursulino here, it looks like, for an uneven off-speed ride off there. Just mistimed that one, I think. Uh, I think he was expecting Gringo to check. check. Gringo didn't check. He accelerated. And uh, the play got away from Ursulino, and it's going to cost him about... 96 yards here. Yeah. There is the uneven ride off. So penalty five from midfield of the outcome here for Clearwater. Let's see what they get put together here. Oh, Mike Gutierrez says beautiful day for Polo Field side today. Good. That's great, Mike. Good. good. Uh, thanks for, for writing in. Appreciate the fact that you're there, and you've got us tuned on, turned on too. Here comes the shot from Columbus right down the middle. Field number two, by the way, is the newest field here too. Uh, NPC, and it is a super fast field. Very nice, good footing, great field. They put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this field, and it. Uh, and I have to say, it is definitely a super desirable field to play on. Hence why we're having the finals of the 16 goal here on this number two field, and which is great because back in the day, it always used to be. You know, the next most prestigious field right after field one. I remember playing the Jimmer Newman Memorial for years on field number two, way back in the day. Uh, and now here comes the pass over to Versalino on the right-hand side. He's got Camp there to put him in pocket. He gets Camp to look over the wrong shoulder, then breaks off to the other way. He's going to come back to it here. Hit a little tail shot there for Nico Escobar. Not where he wanted to put that one. It's going to be Gringo Colombres coming in. Picked up right here by Versalino. Takes it forward there. He t fixes the broken play, and he's gone on a straight break. Looking to send this one downfield there for Brandon Plunkett. Brandon comes in to pick it up right here. Plunkett going to the goal by himself. Gringo takes the man, and Plunkett shoots. Knocks that one off the post and sends it wide. Oh, tough luck there for Plunkett. Off the post and wide on that final goal shot. Another lucky break here for Clearwater. Very much so, Cody. Yeah, I mean, that was two inches the other direction. That was a goal, right? I mean, would have bounced off the, off the post and in. Whoop, Gringo, pump fake right there. Didn't like what he had. Cuts it back to the right now where he's going to find Lucas Alberti, who comes in with Nico right there on him. Now, Lucas Alberti winds up and sends this ball back down the field where Gringo, look at this, what a play. Give and go right here. Gringo's got everybody beat dead to rights. Can he make him totally pay for this one right here? Gringo in the zone, looking good. They can't stop him. Unbelievable power polo play right there by Clearwater. Gringo knocks it in, hits it to Lucas on the right, and then Gringo breaks down the middle, receives the pass from Alberti, and sends it on through and picks up the point. 2-0 out of the score. Positive knock-in turns into a goal here. Great pass by Alberti, as you mentioned. Good pickup here, and Gringo just takes Lucas wide, escorts the ball over the goal line. Beautifully done. Lucas makes a smart play to not swing right there and, and give up penalty one. He saw it was going to be a goal, realized he couldn't do anything about it. The worst thing, that, so he wanted to minimize the damage there. And that's exactly what he did by not creating a penalty one. And that's going to give them a knock in or a throw in here to be one. And it's going to be Versalino take it with him. Versalino going to the goal, out in front, looking good. Versalino drops it back right here. And man, what a goal from Versalino. That was beautiful. Gives it a little 
kiss there at the end and lets it roll on through. A very nice little finish there from Versalino. Getting the crowd into it as well. Good answer quickly here. Watch Pipe with this last little shot. Camp coming in to defend. Pipe knows he might get hooked there. That was awesome, man. Anticipates the hook and then has to adjust on that final shot. What a finish. Nico wins the throw and hits the back shot here. Looking for Plunkett and for Felipe, who's already gone. Going to the goal. He waits for Gringo to come to him on the, on the offside. He takes his near side next shot at the goal. Doesn't connect the way he wants. Can he get it back in there? Nico or Luca. Oh, well done. Gringo jumps on it. Hits a near side belly shot. Back shot here from Escobar. Picked up now by Nico Escobar right here. Gets it stolen away by Camp Campbell. What a read by Campbell. Campbell is out of there with that ball. That should have been a goal. But Campbell just steals it away from him. Now, Lucas Alberti, he has been deadly. All season long, I feel like he's a one player that's been getting better and better as the season has gone on. He's going to try to hit a pass forward here. Doesn't connect on that pass, but he's going to grab leather and jump right back into the play. First one to get to it. Alberti. Turns the ball back around to the inside. Goes back to the right. Lucas Diaz breaks right here. Takes it forward. Lucas dragging this one back across the goal right here as Versalino takes him out. Wins the ride off. Versalino steals the ball away and will get called on the reach right here. Got to love the super competitive 16 goal polo here. Yeah, it's been an incredible season. It has. Penalty two, it looks like upcoming here for Clearwater. Reaching against Versalino there. And I have to say, I, I really love the fact that we're we're live streaming the semis and the finals here of the of the 16 goal championship. I think it's great. I'm I'm so excited that our viewers at home are getting the benefit of being able to watch just how good the 16 goal has been throughout the Wellington Polo Tour down here. As I said before, it's, you know, probably the most competitive polo we've got down here. Uh, and that, you know, and with, you know, right, right up there with the, with the gauntlet, I should say, I think they've both been very, very competitive. Here comes Campbell, penalty number two, no trouble. Right down the middle, Campbell will pick up his second of the day, both of which come from the penalty line. Well done there, Camp. Puts it in again, stays perfect from the penalty line. Remember, we've got and our very special guest coming on this afternoon for our feature game of the week. Polito Pears is going to be here with us. Very excited about that. Okay. Nico knocks the ball down in the front. Now it's going to be Lucas Alberti to win the throw in here. He takes it back to the inside, goes back to the left right here, gets away from Escobar, winds up, fires that ball forward. But Camp can't get to it. It'll be Versalino here with an open back shot, but hits it pretty straight up and down the field here. It's going to be kind of an easy pickoff for Gringo. Raul Columbus Jr. Ooh, ouch. Lucas is going to get caught right here for swinging into the horse. Trying to steal that ball away, but actually ended up I think wrapping the mallet around the horse's back leg. Umpires discussing ball placement here. They could be discussing something else, too. Keep an eye here as Escobar comes in. Yeah, he misses, mistimes that. Yeah, and that's what I thought. They're going to get a yellow card against him for dangerous use of the mallet. I think it's an appropriate yellow card. Umpires are, you know, when when the safety, remember the rules and pull are designed first for the safety of the horse and second for the safety of the player. And after those two factors are taken into consideration, the rules are designed to speed the game up because it, counterintuitive as it may sound, the faster the game is played, the safer it is for everybody on the field. And when the horse, you know, when the horse's safety comes into question like this, the umpires will punish severely. And in this case, they're going to give a yellow card here and make this a penalty number two. Just so it a, was a three with the yellow makes it a two. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify that. Just to jump ship quickly here, I wanted to update everyone at home. If you didn't see already, University of Virginia women's D1 national champions, they defeated Texas A&M. It was a penalty two in the last 10 seconds or so to win by one goal. 
to take down the defending champions in a rematch from last year. So congratulations to the me that, yeah. University of Virginia women's team on their intercollegiate championship win. 4-1 stands to score at the end of the first chucker with Clearwater in the lead. We'll be back after this quick break here on the USPF Polo Network. Equine Clinic, we know your horse is not only a superior athlete, but a part of your family. With more than 30 veterinarians, four board certified surgeons, and the most technologically advanced equine imaging suite in the country, our team has all the skill sets required for accurate diagnosis and successful treatment. Palm Beach Equine Clinic is committed to providing exceptional service and care for both patients and owners. Visit equineclinic.com today to make us a part of your team. Historically, the biggest threat to polo fields has been urban development. And once a field is gone, it's gone forever. That's one of the reasons the USPA purchased the National Polo Center. Doing so gives polo a place to call home here in the United States. For centuries to come, generations of polo players and fans will enjoy the National Polo Center. And that's something we are proud to give back to the sport. Welcome back, everyone, to the USPA Polo Network. Getting ready to start chucker number two. We got a 4 1 score on the board in favor of Clearwater. Three of those goals come off the penalty line, and they're put there by Camp Campbell, and then the one from Gringo from the field. Big first chucker there for Clearwater. Tell us about the horses we got here, Cody. All right, second chucker horse list Joaquin. Pelo Vilgre, La Madrid. He's on Alito. Gringo Colombre is on Coquito, one of his best. Keep an eye on Lucas Diaz Alberti. This is Piki Lapicera. And Camp Campbell will be on Ducati. Or the team in orange, Forbes Plunkett. Brandon Plunkett is on Machitos Sportia. Nico Escobar is on Carla. Pipe Versolino is on one sugar, not two, just one. <laughs> and Lucas Escobar is on Olividada. All right. Um, One sugar, no milk. Yep. Helps medicine go down. Oh, wait, no, that's a teaspoon <laughs> of sugar, right? A, yeah. spoon, a spoonful of yeah, sugar. Yeah, a teaspoon of sugar makes the medicine. Anyway, here we go. It's going to be Gringo to try to stab it out of the air, and Nico will come up with a play. Nico Escobar, open back shot to the center. Oh, good read right there by Colombres. Well, hold on here. Let's watch this again. Let's watch for the ball from where the ball comes. Okay. Open back shot. Ooh. Uh -huh. Little. Yeah, they're kind of, okay because right there. Right, what we're getting right now, what's coming in right now, is uh, right of way against Col Colombres. But the umpires are, are reviewing this foul with the third man, which I think they should because I had it the other way around personally. Let's see where the ball. Unless I unless I misread where the ball came from here. Let's see. There's an open back shot, like, right there. Yeah, to me, well, Gringo's not 100% on it. Right. But, but he's got more of it. He's, he's got more, a lesser angle yeah, anyway. Because it was Remember, tough to see the ball, but where that shot came from, it those, seems like Pipe didn't really have much of a... Yeah, I mean, if anything, he had a... It was on his near side. I don't know. That, wow, that's... Some, that's okay. I mean, I know that you got to be 100% on that right of way. The only thing I can think of here is because 
Gringo was not 100% on that right of way, and Versalino was like checking out, I guess maybe trying to pull out of the play, and Gringo ran into the back of him. That's the only thing I can think of. Well, penalty because... three for Clearwater here. All right, that makes more sense. Yeah, then. so I think they got yeah, it. Yeah, okay, they got, they got it right. It right. The yeah, okay, they switched it back. Now they switched it around. Okay, that's right. Okay, good. Okay, that's what I thought, because they had it the other way around. They were saying that the Lombres fouled Felipe, but I didn't have it that way. I had, it, I had Felipe fouling Gringo there. And it looks like after review, they agree. Camp. Edward Rupert Campbell, the third. Fourth, I mean. Takes this penalty shot and, ooh, it gets away from him. His first miss from the penalty line. Oh, wow. okay. So again, right. this is our third of five games on the network today mm -hmm. and the fourth of five games underway now 12 30 start for the men's national intercollegiate championship final lucas with a next shot lots of angle right here with just the right amount of distance for uh, versalino to be able to get there without fear of fouling and only versalino now he hits it further down but gringo comes in to break up the play hits a near side tail shot to the center where look at this what a what a pass right here to Lucas Alberti, he read it perfectly. Now Lucas Escobar gives it back over to Alberti by hitting the next shot, trying to hit his brother, but Alberti gets there first, gets the ball picked up, turns it back to the inside. Good read, I'm telling you. This guy's got fantastic instincts. He'll leave it now for Colombres and take off to the right, take the man with him, opening up a lane right here for Gringo to shoot at the goal to give a pass down here to Camp Campbell. Campbell doesn't connect, ball still on the field. And Versalino will take it forward right here. Didn't want to hit too far and give that ball right back to Gringo. Now he will go ahead and release the ball back down the field. Coming in, Lucas has got to step on his man. Nico is there. He takes the man. Lucas takes it with him straight to the goal. Gringo coming in for the defense. Now Escobar avoids the hook from Colombres. He blows the doors off of Gringo. Tries to run it back towards the goal. Can't get it done. Rolls over the back line wide. We'll have a knock in for Clearwater. Well, and a quick cor correction in case you're jumping over to find it. The men's final starting momentarily. Ah, thank you. Upcoming Tol soon. Tolito Ocampo says, uh, one sugar is the same Korea as uh, one Magnifica from uh, from Kucho Gerhan. From Kucho Gerhan. Wait, wait. Yeah. Kucho. Yeah. Kucho. Yeah. Here comes the next shot from, wow, what a shot here from Camp Campbell to set up Lucas Alberti. What a play. Man, that was an amazing play there. Thank you, Tolito. I appreciate that, buddy. Good information there. What a goal here. Unbelievable. Lucas Alberti. Great Watch assist Camp from Campbell. Camp. Yeah. Unreal. Amazon delivery of the day. <laughs> Lucas Diaz Alberti puts it in the assist to Camp Campbell. He's all over the score sheet early. Camp making up for that missed penalty three moments ago with the assist there. And Diaz Alberti gets his first goal of the game. Okay. Here comes. Oh, good job. Camp pushed him over the ball and then steals it away, but can't get a hold of that ball. It'll be Lucas here to take take a, uh, control of the play. Lucas. Lucas, or excuse me, Green. Uh, yeah, no, that is Lucas. Hands it back over towards the goal. Look at this shot from Lucas Alberti coming in. It'll be Vilgray to center it up right here. Well, oh, nice try. I was expecting the center shot, not the shot on goal. Almost got there, too. So knock in here for Forbes Plunkett. They need to get some offense going here. Just one goal so far in this game, almost midway through the second chunk. This is kind of their M.O., honestly, uh, Cody, throughout the season. They start off slow, right? And then once they start to they, they get they get all the, the nerves out in the first couple chuckers, they might be down by a few, but then they'll come roaring back at any moment now. Here comes Versalino with the ball, reaching back. Going to go ahead and send it forward here looking for Lucas, but it'll be Gringo. Open back shot, man. These two together, Lucas and, and Alberti, are playing fantastic pull together. Well done, Nico. What a play. He took that one out of the air and then stabbed it again and gave the pass to his little brother. Lucas comes in, gets hooked there by Diaz Alberti. Backed up right here by Versalino. Versalino holds this one, sucks back. Now he's going to 
Send it at the goal. Over the back line wide. Giving up a lot of misses here at goal so far today. Another knock in here will go in favor of Clearwater. Gringo. Second knock into the chucker. Fourth of the game so far. Winds up, fires it to the right. He's going to find Lucas Diaz, Alberti. Lucas goes ahead and sends it back to the center here for Camp Campbell, who waits for the ball to catch up. He's going to let Gringo have it. Columbus has a step on his man. He takes off right there. Look, good play by Camp Campbell to try to put some pressure on Nico. Nico's still trying to chase down Gringo. Gringo's in the zone right here. Columbus looking good. Loses the play, and it's going to be a back shot from Columbus. Oh, man, what a nice try. But Lucas got to it and takes it with him. Lucas Escobar, Luki. Now takes the man and leaves the ball there for Versalino, who fires it forward but puts it right into the horse, and now it's going to be picked up here. Whoa. Wow. All right. Let him play. Here it comes. Well done, Felipe Versalino. He could feel uh, Lucas looking to do some poaching on him right there. Flips it off to the right, forces Lucas to give it up the play. Hits the back shot here from Gringo. Open style to the boards. And a back shot here from Lucas Escobar. Looks like it jumped the boards here. I think it went off of the Clearwater player over the boards. Yeah. Possession play in favor of Forbes Plunkett. First bit of luck they've got so far. One time from Lucas to the center here for Versalino, who rides hard to get to it. Takes it forward now, Versalino. Moves over to take out Gringo. Comes back to this ball on the offside. Open back shot. Good enough to get it there to Lucas. Oh, boys. Ay, 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 guys. Well, a collision here. Whistle stops the clock. We'll wait for the umpires to work this one out. So I'll tell you, right here for me, this is a... Uh, this is just a little desperation on, on the part of the Forbes Plunkett team. You know, they're, they're getting impatient because they're trying to, they're trying to, they're down by four right now and they feel like they're kind of got their backs against the wall. So they're trying to force a play and it ends up costing them a play right here, getting a, a collision one brother to the other. So you got Oof. Nico just saw the ball and that was it. Looking at the ball, going for that back shot, had his focus on hitting that back shot. Didn't see his little brother coming in who was actually more on the line or, you know, is in the better position here. Yeah, you can see. Well, the umpire is still talking this they're one. They're checking over. for a yellow on this one. I think we might see And they're going to get it, yep, against Nico here. I think that's an appropriate call. Yeah, you can see from that angle, definitely Lucas a little more on the line. Yeah, well, still, I thought he was. They don't the see game. each other. Even though it's a teammate Oof. on teammate collision, can still get a dangerous riding penalty so both escobar brothers with a yellow card now dangerous riding against nico mm. this will go down to midfield penalty five in favor of clearwater okay so at this point i think the best thing that could happen here for, for forbes plunkett is just get this chucker in the books get it over with Get through it, regroup, catch your breath, and then come out with a you know a little bit less nerves in the third chucker. Here comes the the knock or the penalty five from midfield. Now Alberti picks it up, goes ahead, takes a shot, doesn't connect the way he wants. Camp Campbell jumps on it right here, and Camp looks like he's going to get caught on a right away violation here, giving a penalty five from the spot in favor of fourth Plunkett. And they would love to get a goal here in the final minute to end this chucker. Mm -hmm. Lucas brings it in. Vilgray there to put pressure on Lucas. Vilgray giving him a lot of space right here. Now Lucas will hit it back to the right. Right over here for Versalino who slips back into it. Nobody on him right there. Now Versalino winds up and pounds it back on. They got camp going to Versalino here. And now it's going to be picked up by Gringo. As Brandon comes in to try to challenge it, it's going to be Gringo to go ahead and take off down the left-hand side. 30 seconds remain right now. Columbus looking good, looking for extra yards, if not an outright. What a play. Look at this. Gringo gives a little drop back pass to Alberti, who sends it forward. But here comes Escobar with Vilgray on his hip. 
able to keep it under control. Slaps that near side open back shot. Two brother Nico. I, this is the play that I wanted to see right here. Nico, or excuse me, Lucas to Nico, and then Nico sends it down. Gringo's got a less tired horse. Nico takes it forward here, still trying to fight off Gringo. Next one there is going to be Camp Campbell with a tail shot. Versalino with a buzzer beater. Over the back line wide. So if I'm not mistaken, that's going to be a buzzer beater, which means we'll have a knock in to start chucker number three after this quick break here on the USPA Polo Network. We got into Wellington, Florida market because of the number of horses were there. So we decided that we should also sell the hay there. And uh, we met some of the polo people there and um, we've become very friendly with the polo community because the, uh, they require such a, a great quality hay and which is what we want to provide. Welcome back to the USP Polo Network. Getting ready to start chucker number three here of the finals of the 2024-16 Bowl Championship. Cody, tell us about our horse list here. Hello, Neil Gray on Premiata, Gringo riding Nikita. Lucas Diaz Alberti on Tamara. Actually, Chip Campbell's on Tamara. Lucas is on Diocho Buchaca. And then we'll see Brandon Plunkett on open, Decima, Nico on Ali, Pipe riding Gasella, and Lucas Escobar on Incari Olympiada. All right, there we go. Gringo coming out with this ball right here, going to the goal. 15 seconds into the chucker, gets it uh, moving all the way down towards his uh, north end of the field, hits a little neck shot up here, trying to get it out there. Lucas Alberti can't get to it. It's Versalino, take it with him. Felipe Versalino now coming back around. Versalino turns that ball back to the inside. He's going to go ahead and hit it, cut it off to the right-hand side here to Nico. Nico Escobar sends it forward, looking for brother Lucas. Lucas picks it up, and he is going to send it to Brandon Plunkett. There you go, Brandon. Nicely done. Good shot towards the goal. Plunkett goes over to take out the man. Camp gets to it. Hits a nice back shot there from Camp Campbell. Now... Versalino, near side, open back shot to Lucas, to Nico, I mean. Nico waits for it to catch up, hits a little belly shot to brother Lucas. Lucas in the red zone, look at this, what a play, boys. That is it right there, well done. Forbes, plunk it right back in it here. 
that goal is going to get their their confidence right back up. Absolutely. Good way to start the chucker. Just a three goal advantage now. Ton of polo still to play. Great back shot towards goal. What a belly a shot. Belly shot from Nico. Picked up by Brother Lucas and he puts it in for this goal. <laughs> that was awesome. That was a fantastic series of plays right there. Okay. Back to the center. Here we go. Ball's back into play. It's going to be Escobar to win this throw. And hits a tail shot there. Looking for Brother Nico. Knocked down by Brandon Plunkett. Picked up by Lucas Escobar. Or Lucas Alberti. Lucas Diaz. Looking for a place to go right here. Lucas back to the right. Hits the next shot. Back over to the camp. Campbell reaches out. Couldn't connect with the ball. Picked up now by Nico. Back to the inside. Nico drops it right here. He's going to lay a hook on Bill Gray. Waits. And then he'll go ahead and hit the little back shot. Nobody's there, though. Oh, miscommunication. That's going to cost him. It'll be taken now by Lucas Diaz Alberti. Lucas Escobar takes a shot at him. And Alberti shot at the goal. Across the goal mouth. And they got real lucky on that one. Forbes Plunkett knocking up coming. Trying to turn things around here in chucker number three. Four knock-ins apiece thus far. Okay, here we go. It's going to be a... Versalino to send that one. That's for me. <laughs> Versalino to send it. What a cut shot. Back to the center right here. Brandon Plunkett coming in. So is Nico, but it's going to be taken right there by... by Lucas. Uh... And now here comes Kev Campbell. Campbell cuts it back on down. Oh, horse kicked it straight back at him. Coming in, it'll be Gringo to jump on it. Nico lays a bump on him. Almost knocks him off the horse. Gringo not happy right here. The professor. Gringo having a conversation with Pipe Versalino. The two captains discussing their thoughts on this call mm. here. It's going to be a penalty five from the spot in favor of Forbes Plunkett. I like the call right there. I mean, he turned and came back along with that right away. Okay. Uh, one shot from the right to the center. Look at the shot from Versalino. It's off to the left of the goal. Gringo's there to hold the man. He keeps it in play and takes it with him. On the near side, Gringo. Then hits it back to his offside as Lucas comes in to take a shot at Gringo. He's got the leg on him there, but it's going to be Alberti to come in here and pick up this play if it's not Versalino. Versalino gets there, makes the open back shot, looking for Nico and Lucas. And Gringo got there, got away from his man, and keeps this ball under control for the moment. Then it's going to be a great back. Oh, nice try there from Escobar. What a pickup by Diaz Alberti. Drops it now for Gringo, who goes back to the left. Gringo's going to hit it back towards the... Left right here, drops it down in front of Escobar. Lucas with a neck shot across the field there. New Versalino, what a read, what a play right here. That is fantastic. Polo right now, everybody was turning for the open back shot from Lucas, and he hits the neck shot to Versalino, who read the play perfectly. He was already breaking for the goal. Can't keep it alive. Next one there is going to be Camp Campbell. Hmm. Lucas. Escobar riding out the line here. Camp doesn't like this call. I'm going to have to see this one again myself. Yeah, let's see. It seems like there was, he had some distance there, but let's we'll see what they got. Yeah, we couldn't see Nico from our initial camera angle. One, two, three, four. Four strides out. Mm. And only two upcoming here for Forbes Plunkett. Okay. Check in from our D1 Men's National Intercollegiate Championship Final SMU. Slight 2-1 lead over UNT early. Versalino picks up the penalty number two here. Brings his team back within 2-5-3. Now the score. And we can hear Georgette and the fan crew trying to motivate the Forbes Plunkett team to get back into this game. Get their heads back in the game. They're doing a good job right now. Did Georgia Jet bring her drums out? I think she might have. That's awesome. Now, 
Here is Versalino. He wins the play, takes off with it. Felipe Versalino fighting off Gringo. Now, whoa, whoa. What happened there? That's kind of a crazy play. Lucas comes in with it. Lucas going to go ahead and run it. Keeps it away from the man. Look at this. Lucas going to the goal. What a play. Lucas Escobar in the red zone here. Lucas Escobar. No, what a goal. That was straight and magic by Escobar. And now Forbes Plunkett is making their second half comeback. Come alive here in chucker number three. Three straight goals from Forbes Plunkett. They're right back in this game. Momentum firmly on their side. Lucas gets away from Bill Gray. What a finish here. Dancing along the end line. Tapping it out of the air. Takes the hook. but That last shot's not easy there. Let's put it on through. Okay. All the way to through. Nope, it stopped in the front. And it's going to be taken here by Lucas Diaz. He'll have Gringo run around behind him. Gringo. And now Lucas. One thing I like about the Lucas's style, Cody, is he's a hit-and-run kind of player. Back shots, quick. those quick transitional plays is where he's been very effective this year. And, uh, He'll drop it back here to Gringo. Now Gringo will run with this ball back towards the goal. Gets away from Nico Escobar. Looking good. He's in the zone right here. He's going to be taken out, and Gringo runs it on through. Penalty one. Well, if it's going against Forbes Funk, it indeed it yeah, looks Versailles like it get is. Standing in the right of way. Only one. Gringo will get credit for that one. Gringo head down, tapping this one towards goal. Bill Gray holds the player in there initially, but then Pipe gets stuck on the line over the right of way. Okay. Jody, Robert's comment saying he says, little brother Lucas Escobar is showing his own power. I... Oh, sorry, that's uh, that's Lorenzo there. Jody says, good afternoon, Cody and Toby. Jody watching from Spokane. Cheering for SMU as well while he's watching this mm -hmm. one. As I've mentioned, you can get the double tablets going. Get your devices out because we've got multiple live streams going simultaneously here Look on the this. USB Apollo Network. Oh, two goal swing right here. No, not yet. Yes, it is now. That was awesome. What a play there from Clearwater to give their team that three-goal lead back on the board with a minute left to go in the chucker. We're going to get back. The umpires are going to let 25 seconds expire from the clock. Then they'll stop the clock for the goal post to get fixed. Dropping this one right down in front of the goal mouth. Picked up by Diaz Alberti. What a little touch right there. Had Lucas not had that post in his way, he might have got there in time, but going to be a goal here for Clearwater and back-to-back -back goals there penalty one and then they come down and convert after the penalty five mm -hmm. got that two goal swing happening there okay let's see Stephanie says both teams are playing so well but the collision was unfortunate I agree with you there learns it says her new favorite player is Nico Sounds like we can hear him uh, fixing the goal post in the back. Let's see. Okay. Jerry Mount says, just played morning shuckers in Blackville and sitting down to watch this great game. Well, thanks so much for tuning in, Jerry. We appreciate you, buddy. And Martin Ravina said, go clear water watching from point clear. All right. Point clear, Alabama is one of my absolute most favorite places I've ever been to play polo in my life. Right out of high school, uh, there used to be the, we used to play the, that circuit. I used to play with Dixon Stroud and Tommy Biddle. And one year we played with Gene Fortuno and we played with um, uh, Dale Smicholas another year. Um, but yeah, we'd go to Point Clear, Columbus, Georgia, and then Aiken, South Carolina. And I love Point Clear. Here comes the pickup now on the near side, back to the offside by Lucas Diaz Alberti. Lucas winds up, fires at that goal from distance, gets under the ball. It's got some hang time, drops it in front of Lucas Escobar, who drags it forward. Lucas hits the back shot finally. And who's going to get to it here? It looks like, uh, 
a whistle will stop the clock with just nine seconds to go until the warning horn. Or four seconds, five seconds, I should say, maybe. Let's see what we can see here. Unless they're blowing this against. Well. Yeah, right now we're seeing penalty five from the spot, right of way violation against Forbes Plunkett in favor of Clearwater. Couldn't quite see from that replay. Uh, yeah. Something might, off camera there. Must have been. Umpire Galindo. So this isn't where the spot is. It's over here. And they're going to the south, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So that's why, that's why Galindo picked the ball up and moved it back uh, about ten yards there. When players are searching for a tee, they might have a tendency to change the angle a little bit, make it a bit easier angle, maybe take it forward a few yards. So that's why uh, Hall of Famer Hector Galindo said, "No, boys, I know all the tricks." Here comes Raul Columbus Jr. Penalty five from the spot, going for it like it's a penalty four right here. Look at the shot from Columbus. He drains it. What a goal! And with that goal, Columbus will double up Forbes Plunkett on the scoreboard and end the half on the highest note they possibly can. Man, what a goal! He hit that one from 102.4 yards out and just drains it. A bomb there from Gringo. He knew it right away, too. What a way to He's end the right chucker. To the, <laughs> He's the going straight to the train, to the tent right there. All right, we'll be back in five after half here on the USB Polo Network. I'm pretty sure there are actually more horses in this area than humans. This is kind of like country in the middle of one of the largest cities in the world. California Polo Club is 10 minutes outside of the city. You feel like you're 10 hours away from the city. Arena Polo is a hands-on, exciting experience. You get in there, you get bumping, you get grinding, you get a little dirty, and it's a ton of fun. The lights that CPC has it allows for a nighttime polo. We provide everything for the students, and we work very hard to keep it affordable. There's such a wealth of polo knowledge within this group of people that anybody can come and get the same experience. Put the draw reins between your thumb and your index finger. Okay, like that. She just started playing here. Yes. I started playing here last summer, but everyone's super welcoming. You can pretty much sign up for a lesson like at any skill level, whether you've ridden a horse or never before, and everyone's just pretty like open and happy to teach you. Because there's so many different people that come here, you can play all kinds of levels of polo. People who have never played polo before can get a good start and feel safe in the process of doing so. I would encourage all families, if you have any interest, bring your kids here. Get on a horse, give it a try, and it's gonna open up a whole new world. LA is full of people that wanna try something new, something exotic, something different. And having this here, 30 minutes away from downtown LA, is the best thing ever, it's a hidden gem.
All right, welcome back, everyone. The USB Pool Network getting ready to start the second half. Let's check out our first half stats here, Cody. Take a look. Plenty of action here. Clearwater shooting 50% from the field for Plunkett just under that. Three assists on eight goals for Clearwater. Four of those goals coming from the penalty line. Corb Plunkett got themselves into some foul trouble in that first half. Trying to clean up the act here. Otherwise, pretty evenly. Even stats here, even contests so far. Again, those penalties really making the difference here. Camp Campbell, he scored three from the penalty line. Gringo Columbus drew a penalty one, and he scored a penalty five from the spot. Mm -hmm. Bill Gray won the throw, and now Lucas Escobar takes it underneath him, then gives it back to Versalino, who gives it to Nico. Nico drops it back right here to Versalino. Versalino goes left, then back to the right after Nico lays just enough of a pick on Gringo to let... Uh, to let uh, Versalino get moving to the right. And now Nico calls him off and then fires at the goal. Look at this shot from Escobar. No way. What a play. Well done. Good back shot right there from Camp Campbell to give the ball back over to Gringo Colombres. Raul Colombres Jr. back to the left. Takes off running. Colombres. Oh, excuse me. That's, uh, that's Alberti there. Drops it back to Gringo. That one didn't work quite as well as they have been. Gringo's able to get back to it, though, nonetheless. Back to the inside. Now, Gringo looking for a place to go right here. Lucas lays the bump on Versalino. Versalino has to be careful to not push the man over the right away. Now it's going to be Gringo to go ahead and fire up there to Lucas Alberti. Looking for Lucas anyway. He sends it up here where it's going to be picked up now by Camp Campbell, who's in the number one position. What a play, Campbell. Campbell, he's got it. He's looking good. He goes for it. He gets hooked there by Escobar. And it's going to be Alberti to get caught right here on the turning violation, 100% all day. Yeah, I think he's complaining about where... Pipe came from, but from where Pipe came there, you know, but I think it's still turning. Good call to me. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I'm with you here because watch as Alberti comes. Pipe flattens he, out and yeah, Alberti kind of starts the turn before he plays the ball. Perfectly timed that one, honestly, in my opinion, Versalino. 
All right, Nico hits a pass over here to Versalino, who waits for all to catch, get past him. Now takes it forward right here as he's got Lucas Alberti coming in to challenge. Lucas reaches out for the hook, then takes it forward on the near side. Now Lucas Escobar will jump on the ball, gives it back over to Versalino, who turns it. Oh, my goodness, Versalino. Let it get away from him there for a second. Now Lucas is there to try to keep the ball away, and now Lucas will take it. Back to the right. Uh-oh. Puts himself right there and gives it right back. Good play here. Well, maybe not. I know the thought process that uh, Versalino had right there because Lucas es Lucas Alberti laid the bump on Escobar, had to bend his horse, which would have put him on the near side, but he was able to jump back on the offside quick enough to be able to pick up the whistle because Versalino didn't quite jump out fast enough right here to make this play successfully. So we'll have a penalty five from the spot here for Clearwater. Good illustration of it right there from the drone. Okay. Here comes open back shot from camp. Too much cut on that ball. Puts it over the back line. Miss hit that back shot, but you like the thought process there, camp. Just trying to back that ball towards goal. Gets away from him. Knock in here for Nico. Nico goes, so they're changing it up. They had Lucas taking the knock-ins. Now Nico's taking it. Gives it right up there to uh, Versalino, who comes in right here. He flattens out of the right away, looking for somebody to go up. He's got Brandon going down the middle. He's got Lucas coming in to lay a pick for him. Now, there you go. Now here comes a little shovel pass over to Lucas on the left. Escobar back to the inside. He winds up. He cuts this ball back. It's too far to the right. Nico's going to need to get there. Get there, Nico. What an... Oh, nice try, Nico. But didn't get hit that ball up far enough in front of his horse's nose to get the angle that he needed. So it's over the back line wide for a clear water knock-in. Okay. Is it okay? So, oh, wow, that actually worked out. No, it didn't actually. I take that back. I thought it did. It did unlucky not. Here, the knock in super unlucky. Next shot to the left goes off of Gringo's horse. It looked like Escobar Nico able to jump on the line here. One little one time next shot from that. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, tough to see exactly where that ball came back, but I think when it came off of the horse, it put Escobar much more on the line. Watch. I think the see where it kind of bounces back across the field. You're saying lesser angle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Penalty two goes in favor of Forbes Plunkett here. No trouble for Versalino. He'll go ahead and send it on through. Right there, picks up the point, brings his team back within three, eight, five. Now the score. Three goals to Pepe's credit, two from the penalty line, one from the field. Now, Cody, remind me, if La Delfina is able to win this afternoon, there'll be a shootout between Coke and Park Place. Is that, that, is that right? If La Delfina... Well, yeah, pilots in. So if Let Off Fina's already in. So then it, yeah. Gringo. Well let me look for Yeah, check it out and really we'll quickly. we'll get back to that. I just I was just thinking about it. So let me know when yeah, when you get a minute there. But anyway, right now we're still playing polo. Here comes the shot from Nico Escobar. Sends it way past midfield down there for Brandon Plunkett. Brandon, good job. Looks over his shoulder to make sure that he's not fouling anybody here. He's going to cut it back. What a shot from Plunkett to set up Escobar. No way. Look at this. What an amazing play right there by Brandon Plunkett with the assist for the goal put on the board by Nico Escobar and Georgette and the gang go crazy. Back-to-back -back goals has Forbes Plunkett back within to take another look here. Brandon Plunkett comes in, hits the cut shot forward, and Nico with the finish. Great assist there to Plunkett. That was awesome. Okay. Now, let's see. Lucas has the ball, forcing Lucas out of the way. Uh oh miscommunication there between those two. Now, it'll be picked back up here. 
And it's going to be Lucas Escobar to get away from Lucas Alberti. Back over here to the left for Versalino. Versalino comes in here, winds up, and sends it back at the goal. Down on the south end of the field, off to the right. Lucas Escobar, reverse next shot. Look at this shot from Escobar. No way, what a goal! That was fabulous. What a play. Lucas Escobar, and now Forbes Plunkett is firing on all cylinders. They go from being down by four to just down by one here in chucker number four. Three straight goals by Forbes Plunkett. This is the best of the bunch. Take another look at the replay. Sharp angle neck shot by Lucas Escobar. That's what my vote goal. for goal of the game so far. All right, Gringo looking to win this throw and muscles his way through Versalino. Can't keep it under control, though. Versalino jumps on it. Camp kind of hits him in the back end there, but Versalino takes off running right here after winning the play. He's going to go ahead and fire that ball back up there for Brandon Plunkett. Brandon is going to go ahead and let Nico have this one because that's a pretty tough angle right here. Nico's going to hit the near side neck shot. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man, that was going to be awesome. Well, it was a great shot if he was able to find the goal. That would have been insane. The new goal of the game. The knock-in again here for Clearwater. Uh, Diaz Alberti brings the ball in quickly right now. Ooh, what's going on here? Nope, that's going to be a clean play there for Gringo. And now Gringo's going to give it right back over here, looking for Camp Campbell to come in and make a play on the ball. Brandon Plunkett comes in to put pressure on Camp. Camp goes ahead and cuts it back at the goal. Camp Campbell trying to get there. Cuidado. And now Brandon will pick up the right of way and hit the back shot. Well done, Brandon Plunkett. Good read, though, by Camp Campbell to win the right off and hit the back shot to the goal. Coming in, Lucas will take it with him. Escobar back around. Lucas still working it down here, trying to keep it away from DSL Alberti. Escobar can't keep it alive, but it's good enough to get it back to his brother Nico here. Nico winds up and fires it back on down for Lucas Escobar from one brother to the other. Straight to the goal. He cuts it way off to the right. Makes for another gnarly neck shot here from Escobar. Lucas will send it through and drain it. What a goal. Wow. What an incredible play. And now Forbes Plunkett is really lava hot and firing on all cylinders here. Yeah, that'll give them some confidence. Ending the chucker. Four straight goals. What a chucker there for Forbes Plunkett. Another beautiful goal by Lucas Escobar. Hit and run. Open style polo. Sending the Forbes Plunkett fans in the Pandemonium. Yeah, and showing us exactly the straight evolution of the game of polo here in the day. Eagles, a piece on the board. We'll be right back after this quick break here to start to, to play the last 15 minutes of regulation time. Welcome back to the USB Polo Network. Getting ready to start chucker number five here of the 2024 16 Gold Championship. 
And man, what a chucker right there for Forbes Plunkett. They put four straight on the board and they held Clearwater totally scoreless there. And we've got a tie ball game to start the fifth chucker. And you can see Pipe Versalino back here screen. He's on Luca, Nico on Country Girl, one of his best. Yep. Brandon Plunkett's on Aroba Silver. Flip side, Camp Campbell will be on Luz. Lucas Diaz on Guinda. Gringo on Tita. And Pet Oville Gray is on Pluma. Tita is a good is one of really good horse for for uh, for Gringo and Aroba. That is a uh, 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 Miguel Estrada's uh, breeding operation. Now picked up here, the ball gets kicked back, and Lucas looking for the whistle, but it's going to be Columbus to jump on that ball, hits it back to the right hand side. Columbus sends it over, and here comes Camp Campbell. Campbell's been playing great today, I think. Campbell has a little trouble with this ball right here. He's going to get called off by Gringo. Back shot there by Nico, and we get a whistle on the play, stopping the clock. Looks like they can catch Lucas for riding over the top of the ball right here. You can see in the background there, I love it, Georgette Escobar, Lucas and Nico's mom, bought a megaphone during the FIP. <laughs> uh, and so she's got her megaphone out there today, which I think is just amazing. Bad luck there for Escobar. A little bit of good luck finally here for Clearwater after a terrible fourth. Chucker trying to rebound here in the fifth, and they'll get a penalty for opportunity. All right, so the Wellington Polo Tour writes in and says, wow, what a Chucker. Don't count either of these teams out. We vote OT. I love it. Thank you very much, Wellington Polo Tour and Jesse. Approaching halftime of our D1 Men's National Intercollegiate Championship Final University of North Texas. Two-goal lead over SMU, 7-5. to five. Mm, This is out. Mm. You can tell the way he went to that ball. He, force wasn't set up for him. He wasn't dialed in there. So a tough break for Clearwater. It'll be Nico or Lucas to bring the ball back into play once again. They're going to switch it back to Lucas here. Escobar. He's been taking their set plays all year long. Now he'll leave it here for Versalino, who flips it back to the left, but gave it right back to... Lu oh, my goodness. Can I have this happen here? Look at this. What a play. Did he get it? He got it. What a goal. Lucas Diaz, Alberti, way to take advantage of the broken knock-in. Ay, ay, ay. That's an unforced error right there, guys. Can't have let that happen. Lucas Diaz, Alberti, picks up his third goal of the contest, all from the field so far. Take another look at this one. Great finish here. He never quits on the play. Wow. Has what a to goal. reach way out there for the next shot. I'm telling you, I'm very impressed with him this year. Okay, ball's back in. Nico knocks it down in the front. Nico Escobar will take it forward on the near side. Hit a little near side open back shot to the center there for Versalino. What a pass. That was perfectly placed for Versalino from Escobar. Escobar now Versalino moves over, takes the man. Back shot attempt there, and it's going to be Nico to draw the whistle right here on Lucas. Diaz Alberti for falling over the right away after the shot. Move down to a goal shot penalty here. Yeah, just a matter of ball placement. I would think three. Yeah, they certainly at want least. a penalty three, as you'll see. Diaz Alberti, good effort here, but always going to foul the second man. Falls over the right of way there. The penalty three here going in favor of Forbes Plunkett. Uh, all right, that's what I thought. Okay, penalty three. Well, Toby, no favoritism here, but I wanted to shout out Wellington, Florida's very own Landon Ekbo Daniels playing for that SMU team. And you mentioned the Wellington Polo Tour. One of the teams in there, Meyer Ranch Polo Team, mm -hmm. Ken Meyer, his son Clark Meyer playing for SMU as well. Not to undermine the defending champions from the University of North Texas. Von Miller Sr. coaching that team. Von Miller Jr. graduated after the win last year. Um, isn't it? Von Miller, didn't he just go up after the U.S. Open? Is that, is that the right Miller I'm thinking of? Went from six to seven? Is that Von Miller Jr.? In, in the arena. In the arena, yeah. Perhaps. You might be right. You, you're on the handicap. I, I am. I'm, I am. But I'm just trying to think because there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of <laughs> Millers, Von Millers and... Vance Miller's and well, Vance is yeah. Vance is still playing on this UN. Okay, team so right all right, yeah, then it must be Vaughn. 
yeah, Junior Vaughn, then. Vaughn Junior is the older of the two. Okay, yeah. So he's the one that went from mm -hmm. six to seven. Played fantastic yeah, in very good arena play. the arena open. Here comes Camp Campbell. Open back shot right there. Just enough to get it back to Gringo, who hits a back shot here for Lucas Alberti, who's got a step on his man. Lucas coming in. He gets taken out right now. He'll check up and take it with him. Now, Lucas Alberti going to be chased right here by Lucas Escobar. Diaz Alberti leaves it behind. Here comes Nico. He's going to hit a quick tail shot right here. Well done. What a play. Right back to Versalino, who picks it up. And who's got the faster horse right now? It's going to be Versalino cooking down the right-hand side. He gets past midfield, but he's going to be taken out here by Camp Campbell, playing that zone back position. Ooh. They're going to catch a whistle here against Camp Campbell. Yeah, Pipe was cooking. Yeah. This time, Camp definitely didn't have enough time or space. Pipe closing the gap. Camp coming in a little slow mm -hmm. from left to right in front of Pipe, so that will put Forbes Plunkett back on the penalty line. A lot of nostalgic feels for me, Toby. My first interscholastic game ever way back about 20 years ago or so was at the University of Virginia. Well, a lot of changes that, you to hear, that arena since I last played in it. You want to hear something Something really kind of neat was uh, Tom Goodspeed reached out to me last night with a, a picture here, and he says, 50 years ago this year, that's me with the Duncan Peters and Rick Voss winning the USP and National Collegiate's uh, from UConn, 1974. That's awesome. He says, tomorrow, the program, I started along with Enrique in, in, in Jure. Enrique Etuarte. Etuarte, man, okay. Yeah, I couldn't figure that out. He says, uh, and then he coached for 13 years. He says they're playing in the finals, and he's going to be rooting for them. So, very cool. What a goal here for Salino. Puts his team back up by one. 10-9, now the score. We've already got an OT prediction from the Wellington Polo Tour. You better get ready to make yours, too. I'm with them. I want to see some overtime. I love it. Not even done with the fifth, and you're already calling for it. Great. Okay. That was a penalty three for Versalino. Now, Diaz Alberti. Has a little trouble there. Gets it back under control. He's got Luke and Nico coming in. And Gringo breaks to the left right here. Diaz Alberti's going to hit it to him on the left. Nobody saw Gringo going. Gringo picks up the ball, goes to the goal, gets away from him. Nico comes up with it. Escobar, back shot for Lucas. Man, I love these two kids playing together. Look at this play. Unbelievable. As Lucas went to turn the ball and everybody goes with him, he hits the back shot to Nico. And Nico's got this one out in front. He is gone. Breakaway. Can he put it through? His shot, it's off to the right. Lucas Escobar, his bread and butter. Next shot here again today, but he overcuts this one. Nice try. Nevertheless, what a, a fantastic power pull of play by the Escobar boys. Yeah, near miss. He overcuts it across the goal mouth wide left. One of those, you know, as you say, Toby, harder to miss than it was to make. That one there, that was a, I don't know, that was a pretty tough shot there. Pretty, pretty impressive with that reverse style neck. Here comes Diaz Alberti. He's going to go ahead and hit this one back to the left, looking for Gringo, but Gringo's going to be covered up here, and Nico's going to be able to get, to get back to it. Nico Escobar back around. Might be at a horse here, though. Nico's going to go ahead and just, wow, hammer it way downfield there. They don't see a drop until now. Alberti does. He'll hit the tail shot there, and it'll be Versalino to come and pick up the play. He'll let Lucas have this one. Lucas running around the corner. Lucas Escobar back to the inside. Look at this. What a play. No way. Lucas, what a play, but it's stolen back by here by Gringo. He gets hooked on the play by Versalino. Picked up now by Ville Gray, who hits it back up to Columbres and to Diaz Alberti. Nobody is back right now, and they're out of horse anyway. Here comes, well, I take that back. Here is... Uh, what a shot from Alberti to Gringo. This is Power Polo at its finest. Look at this unbelievable play right here by Clearwater to get right back in it. Tied up, 10 goals apiece, 20 goals scored in less than five chuckers. No, you were absolutely right, Toby. I think Forbes Plunkett all, you can see them all Whew. going for a horse change. They didn't have much left. And Diaz Alberti, Gringo was already pumping forward. What a pass there from Lucas up to Gringo. And Columbres picks up his fifth goal now of the contest. Four? Four goals. I think so. Yep, four. Okay. 
Ball's put back into play. Going to be picked up here by DSL Alberti. Fires this one forward. We still have another minute and 15 seconds left to go here in the fifth chucker. What a play. Gringo with the right off there, but he hits it too far. Comes off the heel of his mallet over across the field, and it's going to be Lucas taking it with him. Lucas Escobar. Lucas checks up, tries to come back to the inside. Escobar. Uh-oh. Let that one get away from him there. He's going to be challenged by DSL Alberti. Escobar gets it back under control, flips it out, hits it forward to Le Nico. Nico sends it forward right here. Nico Escobar going for it, avoids the hook here. Doesn't even give him a chance to make a hook on him. Nico keeps it alive right now. Nico Escobar. Nico looking good. He's not going to miss on this one. He fires at the goal. Look at this shot from Escobar. It's going, going, going. He got it. What an incredible play to break the tie and take the lead right when they need to get it done. That's going to end chucker number five. 11-10 the score. Unreal game we're watching right now. Forbes Plunkett is seriously cooking. And remember, they were down by four at halftime. What a good second half here, Toby. You kept saying it. Yeah. The second half team. Another great goal there by Nico Escobar to finish the chucker. And once they get dialed in, man, I tell you what, they are good. All right, we'll be back after this quick break here to play the final chucker of regulation time here on the US Payphone Network. We got into Wellington, Florida market because of the number of horses were there. So we decided that we should also sell the hay there. And uh, we met some of the polo people there. And um, we've become very friendly with the polo community because the, uh, they require such a, a great quality hay, and which is what we want to provide. The National Polo Center, NPC, is the new and forever home for polo. With a proud history of high-level play and the finest fan experience in the game, it was only fitting that the new owners of the National Polo Center, the United States Polo Association, put the fields in a program that can be enjoyed by all levels of polo. NPC will be the epicenter of polo in North America for generations and centuries to come, and that is something we're proud of. Welcome back to the USP Apollo Network. We're getting ready to start chucker number six, and we've got uh, predictions for OT from everybody here. But it looks like Lucas might have hurt his arm. We'll find out here in a second. But in the meantime, let's check out this feature that we put together of Lucas and his exploits so far in this game. This kid is playing unbelievably well today. Four goals all from the field. Going back to the third chucker. I love that one right started there. Started a little bit of a come back remember they only had one goal after the first two chuckers and they've really turned it on since that was awesome out of the air on top of it and then this one's really good here this last shot that he hits that one there is not easy and again toby we were talking about it off air for his handicap definitely playing the best in this game and 
Oh, what a goal. With four goals, he's tied with Pipe versus Salino. Excuse me, Pipe's got five. It's going to be tough to pick an MVP here yeah. for today. But if you just go by handicaps, he's probably the best player on the field. Absolutely. Playing the most above his handicap, I would mm -hmm. agree with you there. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a good finish down to the wire here. I'd love to see some overtime. Uh, yeah, everybody's uh, is saying overtime here. I'd love to see it too, just because it's such a great game. I'm not ready for it to be done yet. Both teams are playing lights out, and both teams can ride up the field with their heads held high, knowing they left it all out on the field. Here we go. The ball's back into play, and it's going to be Gringo. Or Lucas Alberti gets out of there. Nico finally gets the hook on him. Now Gringo is there to back him up. Gringo's going to go ahead and pound it at the goal. Coming in, it's going to be what a play here by Camp Campbell in that number one position, but now Versalino gets to it after Camp got hooked by Lucas Alberti. Lucas uh, Escobar. Now. Versalino, I love this little chestnut mare here with the with the with the bald face. I always forget to, to ask him in the name, but man, this mare is something else. I he gives a go ahead. Never mind. Okay, what a shot from Plunkett cuts it back towards the goal, but it'll be Lucas Diaz Alberti turns it back to the inside. He's got Columbres there. He'll leave it for Columbres and go ahead and go to Versalino here. Brandon Plunkett keeping the pressure on Gringo. Gringo gets away from him. Columbres. Now, Lucas knocks it down. Escobar, he's got camp coming to him. Escobar with a tail shot. Right there for Versalino, who gets hit by Lucas and lets Lucas bring him back to the ball. Versalino drops it back right here to Nico, who's by himself. What an unselfish play. Oh, no way. Yes, he did. He got it, and it's going to be a penalty one. Wow, this is some Really amazing polo here for Forbes Plunkett. These guys are, as my dad would say, thinking from their ears up right now. Yeah, Gringo doesn't like it. That is indeed Coquito Gringo got back That's on. That's what I thought. Is that Bancada again from the first or one sugar I think it from might the second be. that Pipe is on? Maybe it's the one sugar. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, it's, I think it is because I think the Bancada mare was. Does Gringo get over the line? Yeah, you can see his pony step over uh, that line. Yeah, that is Lucas. Even okay, I, they said penalty one. Now they're they're uh, calling penalty two here. Hmm. Which pretty. I mean, you know, I that's pretty far. It was quite. A, it was. I don't think it was inside the thirty, was it? If not, just outside. But I could see either one. Honestly, I think the case could be made. You think? It looks like Pepe is trying to say there's the spot. Uh, okay, thank you, Kerry McCain says. Here's, uh, here's the replay quickly, Toby, as you read that. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Let's see. Just to see where exactly the foul happens. The foul occurs here. You're right, just outside of the third, or right. basically on the line. Okay, so Kerry McCann says Pipe is on Pite Kiki. Leah Salvo played her in the Women's Open as well. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, that's the mayor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pipe Kiki and Pite. That's one of Pete Merlos's, uh, comes from Pete Merlos's breed. Wow, look at this. Versalino picks up the penalty two, gives his team a two goal lead now. 12 10 the score. Whoa, what a game this is turning out to be. Again, it will come right down to the wire, but that's a huge goal for Forbes Plunkett. Mm -hmm. Now, Gringo and Escobar. Get into a battle here. Gringo wins the play momentarily and then gives it now. Well done, Lucas. Good read right here. Gets hooked on the play, but Gringo makes a better play. Takes off with the ball. Gringo, Columbres, going back towards that north end of the field. Looking to pick up one. Gringo's going to shoot. No, he's going to be able to get this one. Gringo, he's in the zone. He's not going to miss right here. Columbres looking good, and we're back to a one-goal ball game now. Wow, what a play. Columbres just kind of eases his way straight on through and picks up the point. Finds himself wide open, takes this one down. Quick answer goal for Clearwater here. Plenty of time. Cut it back to one. Kashif says, uh, incredible power polo by the Escobar brothers. This match is making me very happy and want more goals from both teams, says Lorenzo. I think that's an awesome comment there. Now, Nick, uh, Lucas Diaz Alberti wins the throw in. Ringo can't make a play on that ball just yet. Now it's going to be Lucas. He's going to get caught by Nico. Nico wins the play. Nico right here. Oh, what was that? Yeah, Gringo mistimed this one. It's going to be a costly mistake here. They're going to move it down to a two. 
Yeah, well, I think like, an appropriate call too. Nico pretty much gone on a breakaway. You'll see the replay here. He gets fed the bit a little bit from Columbres. He makes a great play hook. And as he takes this ball forward, he's gone. Gringo's the last man back. So I think a very appropriate penalty to call. I think this gives it even better look right here from the from the center cam. Pushes it up front. And Gringo, I'm not sure if he was just I think he probably just missed time the bump, thinking he was gonna hit him shoulder to shoulder. And as if that since they were basically at a walk, he was thinking that he could go in there with a bit more angle, but nevertheless, didn't expect uh, Nico to have the explosive uh, acceleration right there that he had. And Versalino will pick up another point here. And there goes. I really hope people at home can hear the uh, hear uh, Georgette and everybody with the car horns honking and everything because it's fun. They get their two goal lead right back with that penalty conversion by Pepe Versalino. Oh, it sounds like they gave uh, Senor Escobar the megaphone there. I think he's five for five from the six for six. Ooh, from the well line. done, Gringo. What a play here. Comes back to it on the near side. Now, back shot here from Lucas Escobar. Now picked up here by Versalino. Oh, well done, Gringo. Wins the play, fires it forward, knocks it down by Nico. Back shot from Versalino. Gringo jumps back on it. He'll go ahead and shoot. Oh, it got away from him here, though. And Lucas Escobar comes in. He keeps the pressure on. And it's going to roll over the back line wide, and valuable time won't be coming off the clock right now. Indeed, Forbes, a Plunkett knock in. Oh, great. Thank you, Jesse. She says, yes, we can. Thank you, Kaku. Marcos, appreciate that. Here comes the next shot over to the left. Look at this. No way. What a play right here. Versalino coming out on a fresh horse. Times it perfectly. Got there, but then doesn't connect. Ouch. That could hurt. That could have been the most amazing play. But it's going to be picked up now by Lucas Alberti. This is where he really shines. Coming in. Going near side now. Back to the offside. Uh-oh. Gets away from him. And it'll be picked up here by Lucas with a quick tail shot. Gringo knocks it down. Versalino comes back to it. Lucas Diaz. They still have three minutes to go. They can get it done here. They need to score right now, though. But they can send us into OT or win outright in regulation. Columbres, he's looking good. He's not going to miss this one. Gringo ducks and dives, bobs and weaves, and runs it on through and picks up the point. We're back to a one-goal ball game now. 13-12 the score. Wow, what fabulous pull we're watching here today. Back and forth we go on the scoreboard. Gringo gets another one. Lori says, yes, we can hear them. That's great. I'm happy to hear them. I'm glad that you guys can hear them on the live stream. Another good move here. Watch Gringo. No, Forbes Plunkett just do well not to give up a penalty one in a situation like that. All right. 2.18 left to go on the clock. It's anybody's ball game right now. Gringo going to take advantage. No, Lucas Diaz, Alberti will take advantage of having the offensive side. Takes it back around. Now, momentum back on their side right here as Versalino comes in to put him in the pocket. Nico holds Gringo. Gringo gets away from the man, and then he goes to the man. And it's going to be Lucas trying to get out of there with that ball. He tries to flip it forward to Gringo. Uh-oh, watch out. Gringo shouldn't be this alone. Lucas has to come back to him. Gringo going to get through the man right here. Colombres going to goal. Goal, Ringo. Colombres, no way. He let it get away from him. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Tough break for Gringo. Forbes Plunkett. Got to be breathing a sigh of relief right there. Still plenty of time here, but you won't see this often. This ball just hops over oh, Gringo's no, it didn't, uh, He just swung right over the top of it. It's layer over top of that ball. Nico shuts her down right here and then fires to the right for Versalino, who comes in, checks up, doesn't want to foul, so he lets Lucas Alberti have the ball, then goes to put some defense on him. Another broken knock-in here. Their, their knock-ins have not been very successful today for the most part. Now, Gringo Colombres, is he gonna he's gonna get it done right here? Gringo, oh, puts it into the hole. No way. What a back shot from Lucas Escobar. Brandon Plunkett jumps on it, burning up valuable time. You got it, Brandon. Go all the way. I love to see Brandon right here. Good job, Brandon. Near side. There you go. You got another piece of it. Enough to keep it away from Lucas Diaz. Nope. Lucas has got it. DS Alberti going back. It all comes down to this right here. Oh, stolen by Versalino. What a play by Versalino. Near side back shot. Man, they, he is in the zone. These guys want this one badly. Here comes the last 10 seconds until the warning horn. Now, 
He'll leave that ball for Gringo. 30 seconds remain. Colombres takes it forward on the near side. Nico Escobar trying to get to Gringo. Gringo gets away from him. Colombres going to the goal. Gringo gets hooked right here. Backs that now it's picked up by Diaz Alberti. Lucas Diaz Alberti fires at the goal. The last ditch attempt at the goal. It's over the back line. Oh man, Forbes Plunkett has all but won this polo game. They're gonna have to knock it in. I think they'll beat. Well, it depends on when the umpires start their 10 count. It's just called play, so I think they can just they can let, let it run expire. out. That's it. They win again. Wow. Congratulations. Back. What a game right here. Well, this team has done a lot of winning this season. I got goosebumps right the now. Escobar's this is amazing. He pay, you know, two different teams for Plunkett, Copperline Farm, both with a ton of success. This four Plunkett. That was incredible. No, this is even more incredible now because that would have been, a, I thought it came off the horse. That would have been a safety had Lucas not been able to say that. What an incredible play right there. What a win for Forbes Plunkett. Fantastic game, Toby. A little sad we don't get overtime, but that was an exciting finish to a fantastic game. What a way to cap off the 16-goal season. I agree, and I tell you what, Clearwater played a lights-out game. They were great. Just in the end, it was uh, clear. It was Forbes Plunkett that was able to come back in the end and pull off the victory, and now they're going to go celebrate with their fans. For Cody Off, and I'm Toby Wayman. Thanks so much for tuning into the USP Pool Network. We'll see you this afternoon at 4 p.m. for our feature game of the week. We've got our very special guest commentator, Polito Pires. We'll see you then.